as far as I'm aware, there's no prognostic information from the GGT. So um, even though it gives information on inflammation in the liver or other processes, it doesn't seem to have a prognostic uh, value. I think that's a very good question. Um, and I think, yes, there would be patients who should be considered for biopsy. The, and, and I guess that depends on your, your view on who should have surveillance for hepatocellular cancer. Um, currently, it's only patients with cirrhosis. So there is a role for biopsy, I think, in patients who have slightly elevated um, non-invasive tests but are not obviously cirrhotic. So in those patients, I think biopsy would still have a value. Um, again, a very good question. We've, um, we've looked at this before. Uh, about the factors that could affect diagnostic performance. Um, obesity comes out uh, as, as one of them. Diabetes, I think, possibly because of the link to obesity. So there are some factors that you have to be careful with. Um, and the second part is... Um, oh, combinations. Again, it's a tricky one because I think when you start... So it's very well described that you can use simple biomarkers with a more advanced biomarker in sequence. So FIP4 and liver stiffness, for example, or FIP4 and ALF. Um, but when you come to looking at combinations in, in parallel, then it becomes a little bit more difficult because you don't know what it means when they disagree. So if you have second, so I think sequential combinations of simple biomarkers first, and the more advanced ones second, help you to save money because you do simple stuff first. These are quite good, and then you leave the more expensive biomarkers for your patients. But if you put biomarkers together, I think you would need to put a lot of them, you know, five or six, and then you say. Four out of the six show advanced fibrosis, so it's probably advanced fibrosis. But if you have two or three, then and they disagree with between themselves, then you don't know which one to believe. I'm not aware of any of using it as a primary endpoint. Um, I mean, a lot of the trials have histological changes as as the primary endpoint, but they assess non-invasive tests alongside that. But I'm not aware of any studies that use it as the primary endpoint.